sideways. Let's see. Yeah. Next. Coming in. Okay. Take him out of the front. Where do you want to stack him? Right here on the hair. Smell too. <laughs> Keeps the Never can tell. Out of it. Yeah. It's synthetic. It's an additive. Looks like you put them. It's not all fit in here anymore. It's really visual. Narrowed it down. Okay. We want to make sure that the marijuana initiative makes it on the ballot this year. So we collect the, what is it, 25, 27,000 extra signatures. And we're turning the bill in early to take advantage of the law, which allows for early verification so that if there is a shortfall, we can go out and collect more signatures. But I'm confident that we have enough signatures to qualify for the 86 ballot this time. How much did it cost you? I think we spent about $30,000 to collect the signatures. You can ask our treasurer here first that question. Now well, it looks like you might get it on the ballot. How do you think people will vote if this makes it to the ballot? I think it's going to be a hotly contested election and I think we will win. Yeah! Yeah! turning them in early to make sure that the measure appears on the 86 ballot. We don't want to have the kind of problem we had last year. We're taking advantage of a new law that allows for early verification of signatures. And if there's a shortfall, we'll simply go out and collect more signatures. There's plenty more people that will sign the marijuana condition. Briefly describe what the measure would do for us. The measure would legalize personal and private use of marijuana for adults. What this means is that sale of any amount of marijuana would be illegal. Use of marijuana in public would be illegal. Driving under the influence would be illegal. Use by minors would be illegal. Simply to allow adults to grow and possess marijuana. In their own. John, how would you enforce the sale um, end of it? How, if you can grow it in your home, uh, why? How are you going to stop people from selling it? The police will stop people from selling marijuana just like they do now. They'll arrest them and convict them and put them in jail. How many times have you tried to get this on the ballot? This is the third time we've tried to get on the ballot. How much is it? Uh, under the current law, or under this proposal, currently possession of um, currently possession of less than an ounce is a violation. Possession of anything else is a Class B misdemeanor. Under our law, you can possess any amount as long as it's for personal use. As soon as you sell any amount, it becomes a crime. How many people did you have collecting signatures? I think about a thousand different people circulated the petitions. Easily. How much did it cost to get the signatures? I think around thirty thousand dollars altogether. How many of those thousand were paid? How many of that was paid circulators? Well, we think about probably about two thirds was was paid petitioners and one third was volunteer or perhaps half and half. Um, anywhere from 25 to 50 cents per signature. Valid signature. Right, we paid only for valid signatures. We ran our own verification on all paid petitioners and paid them only for those signatures which were valid. How many, how many valid signatures do you think you have? More than 62,521. Right. <laughs> Over the course of the signature gathering campaign, we've sampled over 10,000 signatures. And so we're very confident that this is enough to qualify. How many of those 10,000 did you find were valid? I don't have a precise figure, but it was uh, around 20% in value. Right. right. Okay. Let's see. Do you think the chances, from what you can see, are, are, are better this time of, of winning the spot on the ballot? Oh, I, it's very hard for me to say. I don't really want to get into that kind of guessing game because if it does, then someone might say that I predetermined it. If it does not, then again, I could be. So I can say question. I can't win. I will say this: that uh, with this early of a turning, the ability for us to verify and 
thereby having a longer time for them to put more signatures together and file to add to this group. It's very unlikely for them not to make the ballot, even if they, in this first go around, may not have enough signatures. In the history of, uh, of people dropping off uh, their initiative petitions, uh, what is the usual time frame and how does this stand in comparison? Well, typically the Constitution limits us to 15 calendar days from the deadline for turning in. And with rare exception of maybe only a few days, everyone turns in their uh, initiative measure right at that deadline. So we may have as many as a dozen uh, petitions to do all the verification of signatures within a 15 calendar day period. So there's absolutely no time to add anything to that. This is the very first one, petition that is, that we've gotten so early that we're able to do a verification thereby affording petitioners the opportunity to obtain more signatures should there not be a sufficient number the first time around. Okay, it's all we and Will that make it um, ballot issue number one on the... No. Uh, not necessarily. No, right now it would be, it would be uh, measure number five. There are, four, there are four measures referred to the legislature by the assembly, and those mm -hmm. would be to have the first four numbers. Upstairs today, we just submitted 87,000 signatures on the Oregon Marijuana Initiative to Secretary of State Barbara Roberts. We're confident that this will be enough signatures to qualify for the November 1986 ballot. We've been much more careful than last year in collecting our signatures. There are actually several thousand signatures that we didn't turn in because we didn't think that they were good enough. We also did our own ongoing verification process throughout the signature gathering campaign. Altogether, we verified over 10,000 signatures, and we're very confident that we have more than the 62,521 required by law. Here we are today at the uh, State Capitol building. We just handed in 87,660 signatures. And this is Greg Mahalik, who is, uh, this is one of the people who started OMI. He's our treasurer and was one of the three chief petitioners the first time around. And I'm going to ask Greg a couple of questions right here. First of all, how does it feel to be handing him in and it knowing feels that we're on? wonderful to be done with our third campaign. I'm very happy. Sure enough. Anything to say? This is an open mic. <laughs> Just say whatever you feel like saying. Okay, yeah. To turn him in the third time, I think, is the charm. Um, the last two... Um, campaign served to uh, tell Oregonians that this was happening. This one is going to be the real thing and the, the clincher to say we're going to win. Michael Rose, attorney for OMI. Um, why do you want marijuana legal, Michael? Uh, there are a couple reasons. Number one, as a criminal defense attorney, I'm very tired of trying to defend people, keep people out of jail for marijuana crimes. Uh, number two, it seems to me that as a matter of uh, policy and as a matter of uh, philosophy, it ought to be uh, no business of the government's what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Uh, it seems to me that uh, marijuana prohibition has worked no better than alcohol prohibition in the 20s, and it's a horrendous waste of time and a tremendous intrusion on the rights of people's privacy. That's why I think marijuana ought to be legalized. We're going to be asking Fred why he wants marijuana legal. Golly, it's, uh, I, I still see it as a freedom issue, and I don't, I don't see it as a marijuana issue. Um, I'd like to see freedom legal in this country. I think this is a, uh, uh, another uh, step on the road to legalizing freedom. Uh, I see in our society today, in, our, in, a, in what we are doing politically, I see a very clear uh, confrontation if if that's the right phrase a very clear meeting uh, between the those people who believe in live and let live and those people who believe in control 
those people who believe that we should all think the same things at the same time and that the things that we think are the things that they think. And uh, I guess I feel in my, in my bones, uh, in my being, that I've always been involved in this fight, just as perhaps I've always been a peasant. And uh, we're trying to get rid of the king and live uh, each of us our own king. And uh, that's why I want to see marijuana legal. I'd like to go on and legalize privacy and uh, the, the private acts of consenting adults. And then I'd like to see the, the, the collective will restricted to protecting us from robbers, murderers, rapists, and thieves. And, and I'd like to see uh, violence and lying made illegal and darn near uh, and, and very little of anything else. That's, uh, that's where I'm at. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mr. Doug, Hi. come on over here. Well, you'd look at the camera and explain to the people uh, why you want marijuana legal. Because I don't think I've ever been a criminal, except for the one time the police arrested me for petitioning. Um, outside of that, just kind of always made sense, or sense. <laughs> and we're looking for a uh, Michael Becker here. Come on over here. Would you explain to the camera why you would want marijuana legal? Well, I think that uh, as a member of the financial community, it makes great economic sense to legalize marijuana. I think that the money currently being spent ineffectively and inefficiently to enforce against marijuana uh, represents uh, pretty much money down the tubes. In addition, uh, I believe Oregonians spend somewhere in the neighborhood of a billion dollars a year on... Somewhere in that vicinity, it's probably f at least 500 million and possibly a billion. Uh, these people would be spending that money on the legitimate economy, right? Right. Well, I see that money essentially being filtered into a black or gray economy, uh, money that can be directly used to benefit social programs or any other programs the state might choose to use that money for. Uh, I hope to be involved. Uh, Is there any uh, that you know of interest in the lumber industry uh, recognizing that hemp uh, is an alternative to cutting down trees for paper products and the other uh, industrial agricultural uses? Well, I know historically uh, hemp has been a very valuable uh, product uh, in many respects, in many capacities it has been used. I'm not quite certain, I have not gauged the support in the lumber industry for a product of that nature. Um, it seems like I, the information I have is that uh, Europe uh, uses hemp and that it only takes about 10% of the capital investment of a uh, paper plant to convert from pine trees to hemp. What do you think would be necessary to make Weyerhaeuser and these people aware of the alternative of hemp as compared to cutting old growth for making uh, plywood? Well, of course, they would have to be convinced that it was economically feasible and I'm afraid that currently with uh, a large uh, proportion of those involved in the lumber industry currently out of work, uh, trying to convince them uh, to do anything would be particularly difficult. They are not known as being the most innovative of industries. And uh, that is a question I'm sure that will have to be uh, at least gauged uh, after the fact. Yeah, we plan on dealing with the uh, industrial agricultural uses of hemp much more so in the future than we have in the past. We've had to stick to the uh, issues that will be addressed to us in order to get on the ballot. And now we can branch out more into other uh, aspects of the issue. And the information that we have is that there's about 30,000 uh, different products that can be made out of marijuana. Any more uh, words? Well, woo-ha! Just have a couple of uh, free-form thoughts here. Uh, there's 90 legislators that sit down in this building every couple of years and uh, they're supposed to be the representatives of the people of Oregon and I don't think there's a half a dozen of those 90 that, that would be in favor of OMI but one third of the people that are represented among those 90 uh, use marijuana. We have a situation that's very uh, similar to what happened at the sales tax. Those same 90 people spent two entire legislative sessions trying to put forward a sales tax that went down four to one. Now, how could these representatives have totally misjudged the feeling of the people in Oregon? We have the same situation with the marijuana issue. We know that this 
unholy 90 as I call them, uh, they do not represent the people in, in many issues. And the marijuana issue is just another example. I don't see the marijuana issue passing four and five to one like the sales tax failed, but I see it going 50% plus one vote, and that's all we need. Lynn Funk, why do you want marijuana legal? Keep Oregon green, see Lynn. <laughs> Um, I think it's important to have marijuana legal because I think it's a matter of choice and the freedom to choose whatever you want to do in your own home. Plus, it's an infringement of your civil liberties to have the cops come in and raid your house and go through your house for growing a plant. <laughs> I think that it's an important step in the government infringing on other civil liberties, the fact that they can come in and search without warrants, and that they can bust you and take your property away when they wouldn't take property from murderers or rapists or child abusers that there seems to be an unequal emphasis on a certain subculture in our community that uh, some of the establishment doesn't seem to like, and this is their way to get at them. Now, this is Louie. He's the uh, signature champ of this campaign. Um, look at the camera and tell the world why you want marijuana legal. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, too many of my friends have gone to jail for doing something which they are not criminals about. <laughs> and... Um, I believe that the marijuana issue is a uh, just a smokescreen, a divisive issue, which is intended to keep people paranoid and under the control of the police in this country. And I think that uh, it's time for our country to be unified and pulled together instead of having divisive issues that are like marijuana. And this is why I think that marijuana should be legal. I think there are millions of Americans who like to feel like they're full-time Americans and not just hiding behind some door. That's all. And Mr. Sejo, why do you want marijuana legal? First off, our proposal is a very cautious, moderate approach to the marijuana issue. It only legalizes possession in private for adults. Sale of any amount of marijuana will remain illegal. Use of marijuana in public will remain illegal. Use of marijuana by minors will remain illegal. And driving under the influence of marijuana will remain illegal. America was founded on the principle of freedom. Our personal liberty is important in this country. Adults should be free to make choices about what they do with their own lives. We must uphold these principles. Marijuana prohibition is a complete, utter, total, unmitigated failure. For 50 years, we've had harsh marijuana laws, and that has not stopped millions of Americans from smoking marijuana. It's time to take a look at that policy and try something different. The laws hurt us. They cause more problems than they solve. Thousands of people are arrested. Our courts are clogged. We spend millions of dollars on this law enforcement, and it doesn't stop people from smoking marijuana. The marijuana laws alienate thousands of people from police. We have real serious crime problems in the country, murder, rape, robbery, burglary. We all need to work together to solve these problems. Another reason to legalize marijuana is because the marijuana laws are hurting us economically. Right here in Oregon, marijuana smokers are spending about a billion dollars a year to buy marijuana. If marijuana were legalized, the price would be way down. People could grow their own at home, and they'd have this billion dollars to spend on legitimate goods and services. Oregon can enter an economic boom when we legalize marijuana. Another reason to legalize marijuana is because the laws do not do anything to solve the problems that exist with marijuana. If someone has a problem with marijuana, we shouldn't throw them in jail, we should help them. We'd like to at least see the issue discussed. We'd like to have Oregonians have the chance to vote on it. That's what the Oregon Marijuana Initiative will do. Hey,